Shalom, Miss Real. What's up, YouTube? Adam9720. Back with another one. Check this out, y'all. Listen. Nation of Yahweh jackasses is back at it again. Now they got Mika Yahweh made a video claiming that he's the Messiah that's coming to save Israel and did everything for everybody. I really didn't want to mess with this topic again, but uh, I had to. Let me give y'all a quick breakdown of this damn fool. Charles Johnson, a.k.a. Mika Israel, a retired Miami police officer and follower of Hulan Mitchell Jr., a.k.a. Dummy Ben Dummy, the <laughs> anthropology god. Charles Johnson is the megalomaniac false prophet who cons and manipulated uneducated Israelites into believing he's the Messiah. He also have these people to sell their homes, sell their cars, and get up and leave from where they're from and come to live in his backyard dungeon. What's so crazy is the news done did a whole thing on this and everything. But anyhow, I'm done talking about this cult junkie. Let's get to the presentation. You understand this? Okay. The world knows that the Christ is supposed to return. They are waiting on the Christ to return. It's not a fable. It's not an imaginary story, imaginatory story tale or something that you would here in church and forget about it. This is prophetical. I promised to return. I also promised my disciples that you see here with me that I will go and prepare a place for them. Now when you look at John chapter 1, John chapter 14 and verse 1, I promised them in Hebrew, this was in Hebrew, you didn't read it now in, he, in, in English, but it was recorded and written and drafted in Hebrew and recorded in Hebrew scrolls. But today you're reading in English because now my disciples are reading English. They came through a transformation through time to end up in the hands of the English speaking people and a man of aid upon the great kingdom, the United Kingdom. So here you will see that. Let not your heart be troubled because they were troubled. Over 2,024 years ago, they were troubled because I told them I'm leaving. But they loved me so much until they were wondering, well, why are you leaving? Not knowing the scriptures, not knowing what I had planned, what my father had planned, they didn't know what I was thinking of. But I told them, let not your heart be troubled. Because where I go, there you may be also. But what I did not tell them is that it's going to be 2022 years or 24 years later, or 2020 years later. They wanted an impression that I was going to go to Jerusalem, Jerusalem, and go to Bethlehem, and go and come right back, and then I'm going to go there, I'm going to prepare a place, because we'll be together and have a picnic and have a good time. I couldn't tell them that they're going to die physically, but they sold the goods to preserve to come back into the same body and they'll be again. They couldn't bear it. That's why I told them, I have so many things to tell you, but you cannot bear them now. But how be it when he and I, the spirit of truth, should come and I will show you all things. Now I'm going to tell them the truth. The truth is, I prepared a place for them. This is the place that I prepared. When you go to verse 3, if, and if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again. I will come again. That I, you recognize as the ninth letter of the English of the bit, which is actually Roman number one. One will come again. And, and receive you unto myself. I mean, they were not supposed to be my father. They were not supposed to be them. All that you see here today, except one, met my father, and there's another one who's not here. They met my father face to face. They were not supposed to meet my father. They only know me. And I promise them, where I'll be, there you may be also. And I go to prepare a place for you. Now that place, focus on the place after the PL is an ace. The ace is also a part of one. With the PL. The P is a pay. In, in, in Hebrew, it's pay for P. The L is for Elohim, or short for God. So I'm going to I'm going to prepare a place for the gods of my people, and they're going to hear my voice speak in that place. Mm 
<laughs> but they're going to be an ace. It's going to be an ace with them. That's one. Ace. That's number one card to that case. Now. Proof in the pudding. Y'all just seen and heard Mika Israel make false claims as him being the Messiah. That was straight nonsense. That was dark psychology. But anyhow, let's get to these dark psychology precepts. When it comes to balance of power, show of strength and manipulation, dark psychology is specified as the use of psychological precepts in ways that harm the target. Dark psychology is the use of manipulation, control, and coercion for purposes that can benefit the wrongdoer, but that harm and restrict the freedom and power of the person on the receiving end. Most group leaders want to decrease their members' authority and autonomy while increasing their control and leverage over the members of the group to make people more contingent on the group. Group leaders will utilize several tactics of dark psychology in particular. These are the tactics they use of dark psychology to make themselves seem bigger than life as a megalomaniac, make their problems appear large than they actually are, making them believe they will need the group members and the leader in a particular to solve them. Mock, disempower, or rule out discording voices. Leaders of a cult seek to cut out all conflicting opinions, keeping in mind that usually is not possible. The leaders dominate any divergent voices as ignorant or deceitful, so they can instill their effect and keep the group members loyal to the group's commands and dogmas. Fabricate a big colossal enemy that can only fight as a group. Once people perceive a big outside enemy, they will want to seek protection in the group. As y'all just seen and heard in that video, Mika Israel with his claims of being the Messiah, which we already know there is no Messiah and no one's coming back to us. Anyhow, Mika Israel, I got one big long question for you. I want you to think long and hard on this when you hear this video and see this video. Mika Israel, how are you going to say you are the Messiah and you're the God of the universe and created a man? When the Elohim Yudewahi clearly already told us Elohim does not become man, man does not become an Elohim. Elohim Yudewahi is God, and humans are humans, not gods. Numbers 23:19 says, Elohim Yudewahi is not a man, he should lie. He neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? What does that mean, Mika Israel? All men lie. If the Elohim Yudewahi became a man, then like all other men, the Elohim Yudewahi too would be a liar. Because all men lie. If the Elohim Yudewahi became a son of man, like the nation of Yahweh say about you, Mika Israel, that he would be a sinner, and you would be a sinner, and you would need to repent because all human beings sin. So if the Elohim Yudewahi became a human, and like all other human beings, he too would sin and need to repent. You hear that, Mika Israel? Do you clearly hear that? For real. First Samuel 15, 29 says, Also, the strength of Israel, that's the name for the Elohim Yudewai, will not lie or repent, for he is not a man that he should repent. If you listen to me, Israel, 
Isaiah 40, 25 says, To whom will you liken me? Or shall I be equal to? Says the hell of Elohim Yudewai, the Holy One. Also, Deuteronomy 4.15 says, And you shall watch yourself very well, for you did not see any image on the day that the Elohim Yudewai spoke to you at Horeb from the midst of the fire. <laughs> on top of that, Mikael, Deuteronomy 4.35 also states it, it has been clearly demonstrated to you that Yudei Wahi alone is the Elohim and there is none else not even you <laughs>